Hey, this is Cameron, and welcome to the practice log. All right, well, it's another morning session, another kind of gloomy morning. It's been pretty gloomy out here recently, but that's not going to hold us back from the Bach. So let's get Bach to it. Back again. All right, so it's not as early as usual. It's like 9.30ish. We'll see how long this one goes for. I think we're gonna have a little discussion. I'm kinda starting that off, uh, it's a little scary. We need to have a little bit of a talk before we get started today. It's nothing serious, you can probably see it from the title. Before we get into any of that, let's talk about what we're doing. Main focus today, I think, is gonna be the presto. I'm gonna solidify my memory with the adagio, and then try to get through all of the presto. You know, not memorized, but just get it down. Is this sonata, it's coming to an end. I'm gonna have the whole thing memorized pretty soon, like in the next like two months probably. And I already started working on some new ones, like uh, I'm gonna start going into 1009. Alright, yeah, anything other than that. I don't think there's any updates. So I'm pretty sure that masterclass will be coming along pretty soon. That'll be cool. Be sure to show up for that. It's at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Friday, the 29th. Boom, there we go. I've been taking this time to answer comment questions, so let's take a look at the comment section. Ooh, I guess uh, today can be a good day to go into this. So I got a question about posture from Hot Butterwell. Hello, Hot Butterwell. Hope you're doing well today. Friend of the channel, of course. Uh, but here's what you said. You briefly said something about posture. That was my right hand technique featuring Nurse Cameron. So I guess uh, Nurse Cameron can kind of come back to this one. So here I am. It would be great to expand on this. I can't sit for more than 15 minutes before my back gets sore. Ooh, that's not good. Only 15 minutes? Yeah, we gotta figure something out with that, huh? I'll prescribe some painkillers to you as Nurse Cameron. I'm just kidding. That's not a good solution. Don't get me started on the number of guitar support straps and sitting positions I have tried in order to get either comfortable or get both my hands in optimal position. I notice you look fairly comfortable. I am fairly comfortable. I'm not too comfortable. So, if you could talk more about this, I would think that would be interesting. Thanks with a period at the end of it. I will thank you. I always find that weird in like written things when you end something with a period. It just seems so cold. So I can be kind of a menace with the exclamation marks just to like warm it up and make it more excited. I just feel like the period is just like, it's almost like an F you, just like, thanks. I'm not saying that you're doing that. It's just how I feel when I'm writing it. It's nice to see that you're just using the period as intended. So if we're just going to talk about sitting specifically, I follow what I've learned in Alexander Technique, which if you haven't heard of that or like looked it up, you should watch a video in Alexander Technique. And that's pretty much as far as my Alexander Technique training is gone. Just learning like certain principles. Like when you are sitting, like this chair is really bad for it because it's really like squishy chair. But that's actually why I sit in a piano bench because it's just a hard flat bench and you can kind of stack your vertebrae and then also stack your head on top. The way you actually hold your head is important too because you don't want to just like have it any old way. You want to pull your chin in a little bit and then also, like imagine this is your neck and this is your face. You want to avoid any sort of angle like that in your neck. Like so this is your chin coming in. You want to try to pull it in like that as much as you can. Like looking up like that for long periods is bad for your neck, so I've heard. It's better to hold it with your chin tucked. And it feels good if it's a stretch if you don't do that very much. And you'll feel your your spine like straighten out here, like that bump, that hunch that you get right here will kind of go in. And you really don't want that hunch, you want to get it as small as you can. Next is your shoulders. When people say like good posture, like pull your shoulders back. I always imagine pinching your shoulder blades back and like chest is out, overly so. But I feel like that's more of like a stretch when you pull your shoulders back like that. You want it somewhere in the middle. The biggest indicator here is can you hold yourself up with the least amount of energy and carry the least amount of tension. That's gonna happen if you stack yourself so that you're just kind of balancing. And then all the energy just goes to little micro adjustments just to keep you upright. And then as we make our way down to the legs, you guys got on to me about this a lot. I've been kind of fixing it, not because you told me to, but because it does make a difference. But there is something to be said about this, but I'll get to it. This is like the foundation Foundation. This is how everything starts. Of course, keep your feet flat on the ground. I mean, you just keep them like about at your waist width like this, and this is how you want to hold the guitar as well. I'll have a footstool, but same principle. Just keep everything about this width so you don't want to be like in or like 
man spreading, you know, you don't want to do that. Now, the big thing, and this is what I feel like everybody struggles with, you can practice even just without the guitar, just sitting in a chair, just trying to relax your legs. So you can start with your head, like relax that and then let your shoulders relax. And now I can even feel because this chair is a little soft, my legs are like naturally a little bit tense because I'm trying to like keep myself stable here. That'll be less of an issue on the piano bench. Uh, so I also recommend that, get like a hard chair that's solid. You don't want a soft chair, even though it might be more comfortable, it's gonna be worse for your guitar playing. Just like focus on keeping your legs from tensing. My legs tense really easily, like especially this one, my right leg. I always have to think about this. Now that's kind of all the basics, and that's pretty much what I think about. Like I'm not an expert in Alexander technique or anything. I don't think you need to be, like th those are just the main things. There is something to be said though, and I do this on purpose, about having an adventurous leg while you play. I think body language is important for guitar, and you need to be able to move around and stuff. And part of that is moving your leg, like especially the one leg that you can keep free. So, you know, don't be afraid to explore a little bit. This is like where you want to start at the very least. But yeah, I highly recommend go watch a couple of videos on Alexander Technique. I reacted to an Alexander Technique video. Who's been around since that? Not many. I think I, I probably had like 30 subscribers when I reacted to that thing. Yeah, so maybe go watch that. Maybe Maybe don't watch that, it's not very helpful. I just talk through the whole thing and make fun of it. That's everything I do. Yeah, I think we can pretty much wrap it up there. I'll add more if I think of more stuff, maybe uh, as I start practicing and then towards the end. But yeah, this is gonna be a short one, no video today. Sorry, I know, but we've been watching a lot of videos, it's fine. And we're gonna watch one tonight, ooh, I wonder what it's gonna be. Tomorrow for you, that'll be exciting. That concludes that. So, let's go ahead and make our way to the piano bench, and I will sit properly on it without having to support myself. Oh, uh, one one more thing. Like I said, I've been showing you all this without holding a guitar. You can practice all of this without holding a guitar. And I recommend that you do. Don't just do it in a chair, but do it in everything in your life. You can relate everything to practicing guitar. I've talked about this before, like typing on a keyboard. Use your guitar technique to type. You'll never have that carpal tunnel injury that your mom has. That'll just never happen. Even when you're running or lifting weights, whatever it is, use your classical guitar technique training. Try today, when you're making your next meal, making a sandwich, even ordering food, try to do it while keeping everything relaxed. And if you feel tension build up, like stop and just release it and then get back to what you're doing. And you'll find it's actually really hard to do that, but you can train that and make it the default, that will carry over into your guitar playing. That's something that I'm even working on now. Like I feel like even right now my neck just like started going tense. No, I just have to let it go. Okay, now we can go ahead and get to the practicing. I might eat a little bit of food first, but whatever. I'll see you at the piano bench. And if you're wondering how to be just like me, what does Cameron have for breakfast? Quest bar, Coke Zero. How do you guys feel about artificial sweeteners? Because this Quest Bar is sweetened with only artificial sweeteners, basically. And it's the same story with the Coke Zero. Do you guys like them? I love them. I just think they're the bee's knees. It can be kind of a heated topic. Some people really like them, and some people really don't like them. Mainly for the alleged health effects, like on your gut biome or like cancer. I would love to transition into a health and fitness channel. Ah. Fun fact, a Coke Zero doesn't actually have zero calories in it. It has about four calories. And the reason why is because artificial sweeteners, they actually have the same amount of calories per gram as sugar. The difference between them and sugar is that they're like hundreds of times sweeter. So you can use hundreds of times less. So you only need like four calories of an artificial sweetener to make an entire can of Coke versus like 150 calories of sugar for the same sweetness. Is that a fun fact? You like that? All right, I'm going to get to practicing now. So. I'll see you on the other side. Uh, we're cutting it off early today. Oops. Yeah, because you know what? I'm ready to start my day. I'm hungry. I want more food. More food. I'm going to bring you closer. Performance mode again, eh? Yeah, so I mainly worked on the presto, but I'm not gonna play the presto for you today. I am going to play the fugue, because it's been a while since I played that. I didn't really work on it today. I just played like a little bit of it. I didn't even play the whole thing. So I'm gonna be playing it somewhat cold right now. I'm gonna try to put myself in that place like I'm playing in a master class that I might play in. Oh, that's gonna be sad if they don't pick me to do it. Which by the way guys, I didn't like submit a video or anything. It's just like first come first serve, I'm pretty sure. But I did it like a month early. So I feel like I have a chance of getting in. Cause I don't know how many people are clamoring to put themselves in that position. 
Anyways, here we go. Thank you.
took a lot out of me. All right, well, that was the fugue. Hopefully you enjoyed that. That was just me performing through it. That's what we got. There were, of course, some, like, moments in there that I need to work on, but I feel like it's coming along. Give it, like, six years. I think in six more years that fugue will be really good. I think it'll be, like, pretty high caliber. A rock guitar is gonna be made in 12 hours flat. Classical, uh, whatever. Yeah, we've done a lot of stuff today. I know I didn't practice for as long as usual, but... I mean, I'm showing up, and that's the most important thing. I show up and just do it for as long as you can. Really, when I'm practicing and you see me practice, there's no moment where I'm making myself practice when I don't want to. I always practice for exactly how long I do want to. And you'll find that as you do that, that time will start getting higher and higher. It's the same thing with, like, running on a treadmill, like cardio. Like, you really shouldn't push yourself. I'm really making it about fitness now. If you find yourself getting, like, out of breath and it's hard to keep going, that's when you should just stop and then just come Come back the next day or in the next like two days and just get to that place again and you'll find because i've been like a cardio fiend before i used to do the elliptical when i started I, I could do like 10 minutes and i would just be like tired of it and i got to a point like a while ago where i could do like three or four hours and i would i would run the calorie thing up to like 2300 calories because i would just i would just keep going i could actually just spend all of my energy like in one session and I was going hard, too. But it took, like, six months to build up to that. My cardio is not that good anymore. I need to get back into it. But it, I've been really busy editing and making these videos. Yeah, but my point is, you shouldn't push yourself that much. Like, you should just get to your limit and then just keep getting to it. I feel like that's the easiest way to do it, too. Because it's not hard getting to that place where you want to stop. Because you just find where you want to stop. Do you want to stop after two minutes? Then practice for two minutes. And then the next day, do it again. It might turn into three minutes. But you'll see, and eventually it will build up. Pushing your yourself it sounds cool to do like no pain no gain push yourself to the limit but man it's not sustainable to do that it's much more sustainable to do what you can do and then just go home and then just do that again just do what you can do and you'll find with practice what you can do will turn into a lot like i didn't practice that much just now I still practice for like an hour, which to some people, that's like a torturous amount of time. I didn't even feel that. I got to the end of that hour, and then I got tired of playing. Throughout that hour, I didn't even feel it. And it's because I've trained myself to, to be able to practice for a long time. So, that's my point. Do with that what you will. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Hey, well, you know, if you made it this far, be sure to subscribe. Uh, say it with me. Subscribe. Smash the like. Every day, bro. I'll be selling energy drinks soon. Be sure to buy those. I'm just kidding. I would, though. It would be beer. Hey, want some guitar lessons? I can give you that. I can give you, uh, you want a personal trainer? I can coach you. You need a diet coach? I'll help you out. I'm everything. Send me an email. Mainly inquire about the guitar lessons, though. That's my forte. You need a fiduciary? I'm pretty good with finance, too. And, of course, if you have any questions about anything, like the one that I answered today, feel free to leave it, and I'll answer it in the chair at some point. You'll get a nice little response. I try to be thoughtful with them. All right, well, I'm going to start my day, so I'll see you tonight.